Hello and welcome to Psyched, the show where we explore psychedelics through social, economic, and political perspectives. Dr. Nicholas Wong. He'll be talking on The Path of the Apprentice, The Magic Witnessing Meditation Method. Dr. Nicholas Wong obtained his MD from Dalhousie Medical School in Halifax. He is an intranaut concierge, apprentice intuitive healer, certified breath wave facilitator, tuned earth sound healer, and psychedelic coach. Nicholas, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Psyched. Hello, thank you very much. You gave me a quick little heart attack when I wasn't sure if I was joining in time, but I know I'm here now, so thank you. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Nick, uh, as most people call me. Uh, I'm really thrilled to be part of this panel, to be part of this conference um, and speaking to you. Um, as some of you have heard, if you've been tuning in, Yvonne, Ivan, and Lana Rados are my mentors who just spoke so beautifully about love and their love story. And I'd like to share today about my own path as the apprentice. Um, I found Yvonne and Lana about a year ago and have been apprenticing with them and it's been such a beautiful journey. Um, let's see here. Today I really wanna share with you because I, I know many people are transitioning from being a medicine a participant to actually wanting to facilitate, to hold space, to sit, and how they might do that. How might they do that in the way that serves them and others uh, the best? Um, and one thing that I really want to speak today is about how that might be best served in the apprentice role, having a mentor apprentice role. And what I would love people to listen to is from the lens of what might that actually be like if I didn't have that? What might that be like if I was just trying to do it on my own? Because many of us, as we start journeying with medicine, we, we think, oh, I can't wait to share this with everyone. And we get so excited and we jump right into it. And although there are benefits to do that, I think there's much more benefits to taking an approach where you have guidance, where you have that kind of mentorship to show you a path that's working. And I also want to acknowledge that there's a lot of indigenous traditions, as you've heard of today, um, being with any indigenous culture, you can actually sit with for years, dieting, uh, going through that path, and it's a wonderful path. It's just not the path that I've chosen, so I can't speak to that today. And the other path, that Western path, whether you go through MAPS Canada, MAPS US, and, and actually learn uh, through other trained therapists uh, how to sit and hold space, I think that's wonderful as well, and they're doing great work in promoting the research. But again, that's not the path that I chose. So today I'll speak a little bit about my story to give you some context and then share some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. So if you'd met me 10 years ago, you would know me as Dr. Nick. I was in my last year of pediatrics residency. I had been doing really good work with a lot of patients, but as well, I was also completely burnt out. Um, at the end of 2009, 2010, I was suicidal, depressed, anxious, on antidepressants, off of work, taking a leave, I had a great psychiatrist uh, who was holding space for me, but even then it took me two years even to get back on my feet, to get back into any semblance of humanity. And then I you know, became a little bit of a, of a janitor for Apple. I became an Apple genius and really helped uh, fix computers for a couple of years and got burnt out again, even doing something that I thought was relatively simple. And then I worked in Big Pharma for a couple of years because I could finally use my MD and make that six figures and be conventionally successful. And I burnt out again. And I thought, I'm not going to keep doing this. I keep jumping on this hamster wheel. It's not working. And so I took some time off deliberately. And when I did that, what I found was I wanted to work with other doctors who are burnt out because, you know, I've been through that. I can help fix them as my thought process. And when I reached out and found out what to do next, I I was told to become an ontological life coach, and I did. I found the best ontological or being-based coaching program, and it was wonderful. 
uh, had great clients, was really changing lives, but something felt like it was missing as well. And so after a couple of years, I left that leadership team as well, just not sure of what to do next. And thankfully, during this whole time, I had found uh, spirit plant medicine because for the first 30, 60 years of my life, I considered them all drugs. That's what I was told. And little by little, I was able to you know, dabble in the forest medicine, dabble even in some of the synthetics and, and start actually for the first time feeling other souls. Um, something that my logical brain couldn't understand, but part of me was awakened to. And I kept getting called to uh, sit with grandmother, but I was terrified because I'd read about Tim Ferriss's experience about having tonic-clonic grand mal seizures, and I thought, that's too dangerous. Until I met someone who worked with the medicine, who um, was also a former professor, and I could speak to her cognitively and spiritually and see that, and I was like, I trust this person. So I sat with her almost two years ago at the end of 2018. And she really kicked my ass. Um, for the first two hours, I lost all consciousness of who I was, what I was, where I was. I didn't even know my identity in any way. And every breath out felt like I journeyed into nothing, felt like I died and returned to the void. And every breath in, it felt like I was getting the electric shock paddles and getting shocked back to life with a full charge. And that happened over and over again for about two hours. And when I first started coming to, I was so terrified of losing myself again, I started biting myself on the shoulder and kept biting and biting and biting myself. And so when I woke up afterwards, I had this giant bruise there. Thankfully, grandmother also showed me a lot of beauty. Um, I wanted to heal from my trauma from medicine and she tumbled me all the way back to my birth and healed me from trauma that I didn't realize existed. And when that happened, I got something that my Western mind also couldn't understand. I had lived for 38 years with asthma, what I, what I knew or believed to be a lifelong disease that I was on Western medication for, that I had pulmonary function tests that were maybe 70% of normal, that I was allergic to things, that I couldn't handle things. And because of that powerful journey, I decided to give it a chance. I said, you know what, let's see what happens if I was possibly healed from this. And that was the last day I took any medications for my asthma, any Western medicines. And the funny thing is, is that recently I just became a breath wave facilitator. And I would never have imagined I'd be teaching people how to breathe in my life. Um, so that was another sh shift that had to happen. It was just a reminder of this calling to spirit plant medicine. And from there, I loved the spirit plant medicine, but I was also terrified of it because it was so potent. And it wasn't until I experienced MDMA for the first time and had this beautiful feeling of love, of oneness, of connection that I was like, oh, wow, this medicine I could work with. I don't lose control. I can be connected with people. And as well, with that feeling of love, I realized that my whole suicidal ideation that I'd had sitting in the back for 10 years was gone because I could never imagine ending life early. And so I'd found something that I thought I'd want to share with people. I thought I was ready to share with people. And so I would say in hindsight now, cavalierly, I took off ac across the country with this medicine in my pocket, talking to people about it, sharing it, having transformative experiences, but also because I was so cavalier, forgetting that other people are at different stages in their own evolution. And so I actually shared it with someone I loved, got kicked out of their house, had all these reminders of the things that I didn't know, felt sheepish, felt like, oh my God, I, I really don't know what I'm doing. And thankfully, Spear Plant Medicine, when I came back, found me uh, Yvonne and Lana's ceremony, because I'd always been looking for a ceremony with forest medicine. And something called to me and I signed up for it. And they talked about what they shared earlier about Yvonne being able to project himself astrally and my mind said, whatever, that's okay, just be with whatever it is. And when the medicine started, I just had a therapeutic dose of it, so it wasn't too big. And I thought, this is just going to be another journey, no big deal. And then it hit me. And I had what felt like a psychotic break. I felt like I was trapped in the world, going back and forth for the past 12 hours, trying to go back and being unable to escape. My mind thinking, this is going to be my life. I'm never going to leave this. And if you looked at me outside from the 3D world, I was wriggling on the ground, overheating. People had to help me take off my clothes down to my underwear. 
And then every now and then, Yvonne would come over, he put his thumb on my forehead over my third eye, whisper something in my ear, and then boom, I'd be out and passed out again. And this had happened over and over again until finally I was able to snap out of this. Finally, I was able to witness what was going on and see the beauty and see Yvonne in multiple places healing multiple people. And as well terrified of what had just happened. And that night, everyone telling me they could see me transform and I could see that, but still unsure of what happened until the next day during integration. And I asked them like, what the hell was that about? Why did I have to go through that? Why did I have this psychotic break? And I'm so grateful that they were there and they were able to share with me like, Nick, what you aren't seeing is that that's your life all the time. Your mind is controlling you so much. And the medicine wanted to show you, this is what your life is like. You just can't see it from this perspective. And afterwards, what my life might be like if you choose to let go of some of that control. And I could see it now. I could see how my mind had been playing tricks on me. But I could also see how terrified it was. And I told him, thank you so much for this. And I don't think I'll ever take medicine again. And they smiled and said, well, we'll see you whenever we see you again. And so I found myself a week later speaking with my former healer who'd take me through the grandmother journey. And I was asking her, because I was curious then, like, you know, what's this path like? How did you get here? What do you have to do to get here? And she was talking to me about her apprentices and things like that. I thought, oh, that's really interesting. I thought, I have this calling. I was like, I think I want to ask the angel for Ivana Lana. I want to see what that's like. And so when I left, I was sitting on the side, standing on the sidewalk, waiting to get picked up. And I got a message, I got an email. And it was from Yvonne. I had an incentive an email. And he said, Lana and, Yvonne, Lana and I would like you to angel at our next ceremony. I thought, wow, well, thanks, universe. I guess, I guess I'll do this then. And so two months later, I find myself at the ceremony and wondering what's going on and asking, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And Yvonne kept reminding me, just be. Just be yourself. He said, but there is one question. He said, what dose would you like to take today? It's like, Lana takes about 0.5, you know, it's a very low dose so that she can actually be very conscious. I take about 1.5, you know, it's a, a good sized dose so I can actually travel and astral to travel. And I thought, well, I definitely don't want to do last time. So I was like, maybe like 0.69. I was born June 9th. I like the number. Let's go low. And he said, that's nice. He's like, I'm going to give you 2.3. And thankfully, my intention was to trust. I said, I don't know why, but I'll trust you. And so as he's pouring out my medicine after everyone else has had theirs, Lana looks and says, like, what are you doing? That's way too high a dose. We need him to angel, not to wriggle around. And he said, just trust. And as he always does. And after I take my medicine, I am holding on. I'm struggling. And I don't know if I'm going to make it until finally Lana comes by. And she says, Nick, you know, Yvonne and I have got this. We don't need you to be here. You know, we'd love you to angel. But if you can't, just let us know when you can journey. It's going to be okay. And I'd never been allowed to do that before, allowed to, in my words, fail. But once I let go of that needing to perform, holding everything up, everything just worked out perfectly. I was exactly where I needed to be, when I needed to be, holding whoever who needed it, talking, just being with. And it was a beautiful session. I got to journey myself, too, and that's when I came up with my own title, Intronaut Concierge. I'd always wanted to be a concierge since I was seven, and I realized now I get to do it and work with people to look inwards. And I was so thrilled. And Yvonne and Lana saw me as well. And they were like, you know, we've been waiting for someone like you. And, and I'll share next is just a few weeks, about a week later, not even. I went on that three-day one-on-one wild Zen experience with Yvonne. I had resisted it. I did not want to go because I knew he could see through me. But my wife wanted me to become a true man. And it was her gift to me. And finally, I gave in and I went. And it was exactly what I needed. I needed to be seen by someone. I needed to go through that process. And it was challenging. It was painful. But I could actually see myself. And that's when Yvonne told me all the things that he saw for me. And I realized this partnership, we were going to grow together. And we did. And from there, we've held ceremonies together. We've grown together. We've held personal private sessions. We've even had a men's retreat together. And Yvonne told me from that very first day his vision of him being able to work with people globally and online and he just didn't know how. And during this COVID, we, we finally figured it out because that's that's what I bring into this. And we, we've tested it twice. It's worked beautifully. And we're going to have our first 
online ceremony, world premiere that we're gonna offer back to the world for free as a way of sharing in the abundance that is right now. And that's gonna be on July 11th. And I'm sharing that just to put a, put a little thought process in people's head in case it calls out to them. And at this point, I really wanna share some of the lessons that I've learned along the way because it's all come up. And the first is, and you've heard this many times before, that you're going to get tempted as you start stepping into these roles. You have to do your own shadow work. You have to do your own healing. And one of the things I never learned as a medical doctor was how to heal myself. The thing we were always taught is first, patients first. You always put the patient first. They're the ones that have disease that you need to help fix. And so I sacrificed myself in every way to fix people. And so at the end of my residency, I weighed 105 pounds. I was less than 20 on my BMI scale. My blood pressure is 150 over 110. And I knew there's a knowing in me that if I kept doing this, I'd be a really good pediatrician and I'd be dead in 10 years. And so I'm so grateful now that I burnt out from Western medicine and that I'm still alive and healthier than I've ever been 10 years later. And it's because now doing this work the healing is always focused on me and the other person's a mirror of the healing that I need to do it myself. When I heal myself, I can heal others. And that's that beautiful, beautiful parallel that we have. And the deeper I'm allowing myself to be healed, the deeper I'm allowing others to be healed. So do your own work. That's the first thing. The next thing I want to share is allow the medicine to call you. You can't rush this. I wanted to rush it by actually saying, I found something that I can control, MDMA, let's do this. And I thought, oh man, now I can finally see. I was just scared of working with the forest medicine. I wasn't choosing something out of love, I was choosing something out of fear. And I am so glad now that I can choose out of love. It's terrifying at times, but without that little bit of fear, you're not actually being honest. There's always gonna be fear heading into a ceremony, no matter how much you think you know what's going to happen. There's always the unknown. So recognize when your ego's being cavalier. Don't rush the journey. There's nowhere we're trying to get to. And the third thing, and why I really love being part of this mentorship team, is that Yvonne reminded me right away, he's like, you're going to fail over and over again. And I've never had that concept. As a doctor, they always joke, it's like, you're going to kill someone. Like, everyone kills someone. And that's terrifying, which means you work even harder to be perfect which means you're even more stressed out. And then here, I'm hearing from my mentor, you're going to fail, that's the first thing. He's like, but you have to fail consciously because when you fail consciously, you can hear the lesson that's there. And one of the failures I wanna share with you is that we were doing this men's retreat. It was beautiful, everyone got what they wanted, it was fun. But then I got attacked by someone it felt like. He was telling me, you're not doing this right, you're not screening people properly, you're not giving a medical questionnaire, you're being irresponsible, you're dangerous. And at first I was really hurt and I was defensive because I'm like, no, I'm a medical doctor. I'm screening everybody. I'm verbally talking to them, asking all the specifics. But Yvonne said, what's the lesson? And we realized the lesson is that even with all that, a medical questionnaire is amazing. It takes some of the pressure off. It allows us to automate some systems, allows us to ask in a different way. And so the very first personal private client we had that answered that, we're like, wow, this is great. We got lots of good information. And we had a great session with them. And at the very end, just as we're about to close up, he has a paranoid break. And it takes everything we have to calm him down, to breathe with him for the next few hours so he can actually ground back into his body. And we're like, holy shit, how did that just happen? We did this screening. And that's when the second lesson came, which is the paper questionnaire is great, but you can't forget about the intuition. Because my intuition in hindsight saw things. Why was he being so secretive? Why was he not sharing his address? All these things. That if I'd used my intuition, I would have said, something is there. But I relied on the questionnaire. And so I got to fail again consciously and learn the lesson. So now whenever anyone asks me a question they don't have the answer to, I'm so grateful. I used to be so scared because I'm like, I should know this already. Aren't I supposed to be the knowledgeable one? And I realized, no, I can't know everything about everything. This is the medicine in the universe remind me this is the next thing for you to learn about, to look at, because there's always more to learn. Your learning will never end. So fail consciously, but be part of a team because then you can support each other. And that brings me to my next thing. There is no right path. 
follow your intuition. There's so many paths to becoming adept at doing this work. Mine was working with Yvonne and Lana. I had so many healers I could have chose from, and for some reason my intuition said Yvonne and Lana. They are all fantastic. And so that's what I invite you. You've probably all sat with someone. If you haven't, then reach out to us because I'm happy to connect with people or I'm happy to be part of your team. But know that if you've already got a calling to reach out to someone, even if it's terrifying, that's especially the reason to call out to them because your ego is scared of getting seen and your higher self, your soul, wants to be seen. So follow the path that's coming. And know as well, everything that you've done up till now has been the right path. I used to think I wasted 10 years being a doctor. I wasted two years at Apple. I wasted two years being suicidal. I wasted two years working for pharma. And I realized if I hadn't done all of that, I couldn't be here in front of you today. Because I learned how to work as a Western doctor. I learned about diseases. I learned how to work really hard. I learned my technology piece. I learned about big pharma and that you know, drugs weren't the way that I want to do things. I learned how to create financial success because without finances, you can't do this either. So I had all the resources I need in place to be here right now with you. And then I want to share that you have no guru. Many of us go to someone, and I used to go to Yvonne Lana thinking they are the answer. They know everything. And Yvonne's first thing to tell me is like, I can share you my truth. I can be a mirror for you, but I am not the truth. You have to choose what resonates and what doesn't. Because if you put someone else on that pedestal, they will never be the person you think they should be. The more I get to know the two of them, the more I get to see their humanity and so beautiful. I get to see them when they have their fights. I get to see them make up. And that allows me to see that I'm allowed my own humanity. Because there's times that I don't want to be human. I want to be above human. And that's not the point of our existence. We're here to be humans on our spiritual path. And so allow the person that you're looking up to to fail as well. Allow them to be human. And take whatever you can. Take the lessons, both good and bad. Because there is really no bad if you look at it. It's just the dichotomy we see the world in, the duality we see it in. Everything is a lesson. And that leads me to the next point, spiritual and mental materialism. I used to be a hoarder, and I still am in a way of things because that's how I grew up. But then I really wanted to, once I started doing this work, almost hoard crystals or hoard trainings. And that's what Yvonne reminds me. Like, there's nothing you need to have. You have everything you need. And half the time, he reminds me, you don't need more training. You just need to start doing. You need to start providing. You start offering. And you will heal yourself by working with others. And that's what I invite you to do. Many of us are terrified. We need to have this degree before we can do it. Remember that there's nothing that you need, but there may be a things that you're calling to want. There may be a knowing, and if there is, then go after that. But if you're doing to fill a void of a fear, then do you really need to spend your time there? And that leads to the stop chasing the dragon. Many of us have had that amazing, earth-shattering first experience of medicine, and we want to keep creating that. And if you really want to do that work, it's letting that go. Because the more witnessing, the more consciousness you have, the more subtle the lessons are. The journeys are no longer explosive, they're inward. And it's beautiful to allow it inward. Let that happen. Let it unfold on its own. And nearing the end, I used to think I was helping people by spending two hours with them, by being with them and sitting tightly with them. And what Yvonne reminded me of is there's times when you're a crutch and there are times when you're actually healing and helping. And if you sit with someone for too long, you're actually becoming a crutch. You're making them dependent on you. That's what you're trying to do because you want to be needed. Real healing means you go to them, you help them through that glitch they're in, and then you step back and let them keep going. Maybe they need to actually struggle at times and trust your intuition to tell you what's what. Because as well, when you're being a crutch, it means you're taking everything on yourself. And that's how I got so sick being a medical doctor. And I don't want to do that again. So keep doing your own work, cleaning that energy out. So I hope you've gotten a few things that you can take away, a few lessons you can take away. That you can see the beauty of having that mentor relationship. And I really want to share as I close up that I'm thrilled for whoever's out there who's looking to go down this path. To know that you probably already have the mentor in front of you. And for those who are just curious about sitting, about angeling, 
one of the beautiful things maybe to take part in our online ceremony. We are looking always for the local healers. We've had we've had sitters as far away as Indonesia in our two beta tests. And it's been beautiful because they get to learn while helping others. And many have never done it before. And we love to help train. So you can find out more. Go to www.intranaut.com. July 11th is the date. We'll be posting the times and everything's there. Know that it's completely free. You have to bring your own physical magic into the ceremony, but everything else will be creating that safe container. We'll be supporting the people that are sitting as well. So all the best in your journey, and I look forward to any questions you have. Thank you. Nick, thank you so much for that. Um, you know, there's folks in the chat saying they got goosebumps uh, with your words, and uh, I, I would definitely agree. It was really, really beautiful, well composed, and um, yeah, taught taught a lot. So thank you. Uh, first question from the audience is very simple, but where where is Intranaut based? I don't think we got a chance to uh, ask um, Ivan and uh, Lana. Thank you for asking. Uh, we're based in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. And someone is asking what the website is, but that's Intranaut.com, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, beautiful. Um, you know, I, I'd love to ask here, let me just send this real quick. I'd love to ask uh, very quickly, you know, you brought up this um, concept of, of the guru and, uh, and the teacher, uh, let's say. Um, you know, besides for, you, you know, I feel like a, a large part of your talk was just listening to intuition. Um, and besides for that intuition, is there, are there other things that you should really be looking for when you're looking for someone to learn from? Maybe you know that you're not necessarily where, where you need to be, or there's more knowledge that you need, or you just feel uncomfortable being able to do a specific type of work. You know, there's, there's intuition and, and what else is there to allow for you to know if, if someone is, uh, is really worth spending the time and, and the energy to work with them specifically. Mm. And thank you for saying that. Um, I think the thing that I saw for Yvonne, uh, what really drew me to that session was I was reading his profile and he had spent two years stopping any work with healing to kill his own ego. And I think if you're drawn to someone, take a look. Are they almost too shiny for you? If they look too perfect, are they allowing you to see their own cracks or to hear their own history of where they've actually stumbled? Mm. Um, because if someone seems too shiny, it's because they're unwilling to share with you the parts that aren't shiny. There's no one that I know of doing this work that, um, that I think is doing great work that doesn't share, hey, I had this issue, I had that issue. Like I love the speaker earlier who spoke about her own bulimia. Like we're willing to share our darkest parts because we realize that that's the piece that you'll probably resonate with. I was suicidal. Oh, okay, that's why you can actually know that you have this fear of death, this relationship with death. Um, so it's not just intuition, but actually seeing someone and seeing all of them. If you're not seeing all of them, then they're hiding something and they're unwilling to be with that. They probably aren't ready to be your mentor yet. Mm -hmm. They're probably doing that work for themselves. Yeah, definitely. And with you know more and more organizations um, and you know healers coming into the space, uh, organizations that facilitate either retreats. Um, you know, I, I'm sure that your uh, you yourself and your team have heard of uh, organizations like the Guild of Guides. I'd love to hear about you know some of the infrastructural pieces that you feel like still have to be built uh, to be able to make sure that individuals are able to step into these experiences with the most harm reduction um, available to them and, and just the best path forward. Yeah, um, I love these organizations in the sense that they're trying to create some standards and provide resources because there's basic things as you heard today, people say it's basic to have a medical questionnaire, but it, it's not basic to everyone going into it. We all come from different backgrounds and these organizations are trying to create that framework and as well, uh, something that Lana has been very interested in is now that there are elders in the community, it's creating a, a group of elders who can help oversee. And the thing that we're also very conscious of is we don't want people to forget the magic though. That when you have too much regulation, then you're actually limiting the people that are just going off in their own direction. You just can't understand it. Mm -hmm. Just because you can't understand it doesn't mean they're doing great work. Yeah. Um, so I think what I want and what I see for this is we have, for example, in Canada, we have the Canadian Psychedelic Association, I think. They just, they're just brand new and they're trying to form that overseeing body so that we can actually help govern ourselves 
And as well as I speak with their leaders, what I love is like, but we don't want to stop anyone who's doing great work. We want them to keep thriving. We actually want them to be the ones leading and sharing what they know, because then we can all get better. And that's the thing that we have to remember. We don't want to be like the Western societies where it's like, let's just avoid litigation. No, we're not here to cover our ass. We're here to make sure everyone's getting the best work possible. Mm -hmm, yeah. Definitely. The last thing I'd love to ask is, you know, you talked about this concept of revealing the pieces of yourself that aren't necessarily shiny. Um, the pieces of you that may be, you know, corrupt or harmful. Uh, in, the, in this practice, um, you know, you're, you're being entrusted in many ways by someone um, in a very deep way. What can we, you know, what, what should we be doing with individuals that maybe abuse that power or um, you know, step step outside of um, step outside of I guess the inherent rules uh, that that are written in the ways that we can actually hold space for individuals. Uh, how do we allow for them to be able to heal themselves and to reintegrate, or decide that you know this is someone who needs to go on a long journey and we can't engage with until they've actually gone on that journey for themselves? Mm. And I, I could spend some time clarifying the question, but I'll, I'll try to answer it instead. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a couple pieces. I, for us, we've realized that we really have to trust the medicine. And what I mean by that is that even at the last minute, we've had people before uh, who are going to work with us, and we've had to say no. Um, we've got everything ready. We've gotten them to come over to Vancouver from wherever they're from. And then the medicine said, they're not ready for this yet. And we said to them, hey, we're really sorry. We know this is hard to hear, but you're not ready for this yet. There's some work you need to do outside of medicine work, whether it's being with whatever shadows you have that you need to get through talk therapy or something else. And I think for everyone out there, the thing that we did, we were like, and in our integrity, we got you to come over here. We're paying for all your expenses to have gotten here, you know, because that's the container you have to hold. And you have to always be ready that someone may not be ready. Mm -hmm. and listen whenever that comes up because the worst thing that we could do actually is to go on a journey regardless because this medicine is all these medicines are not without risk as you know it can actually go down a very dark tunnel for some people and you want to know that that's a tunnel you can bring them back from mm -hmm. yeah definitely well nick thank you so much i really appreciate the time really appreciate the perspectives and sharing everything that internet is up to as well as your personal journey thank you so much for joining us Thank you so much. Be well. Yeah, be well, man. Bye-bye. <laughs>